Hey y'all, Coach Jennifer here on 8 17 2023, and I'm in a bit of a rush. But we're talking about the new moon and how it will be seen today. Um, again, it's 8 17. We'll be seeing the new moon. If you're watching this video after the fact, this video will contain information about blowing the trumpets while we blow the trumpets. Um, um, there'll be some information on the upcoming feast days, there'll be some information uh, on. Uh, uh, some Enoch calendar stuff in here. We'll be talking about how the Enoch calendar works, particularly um, this particular year when we have this 13th month. We're going to explain all of that using this here. So we'll get to all of that. Praise our Father in heaven. You know, if it, if it be his will, we will get to all that. Um, we got some moon data to look at. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing we're looking at in Psalms 81, we're looking at verses 1 through 4 this time. Usually we just look at verses 3. Uh, where it talks about blow up the trumpet, but I'm gonna start right back at verse one this time, where it says, "Singing aloud unto God our strength, make a joyful noise unto God, unto the God of Jacob. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. This is our Father in heaven. Hallowed be His name." It's talking about making a noise. We are commanded here in eighty one to make this noise. It says, "Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery." Um. Hmm. I should actually look all of these up. Wouldn't it be interesting to have all of these instruments in your house? Blow up. Well, that's a little bit of materialism. But anyway, blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on the solemn feast. And that's why it would be a little bit materialism. That's what the problem with materialism is, is because you see here a trumpet. And then you say, well, what about a shofar? A trumpet and a shofar, you know, the point is it may not matter exactly what it is you blow what is telling us here is that we are supposed to blow the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day now we normally look at other translations to talk about how and when this time is because there is still some confusion there are those who are trying to trick everybody into thinking that somehow a big old fat moon in the sky is a new moon we can see that over here at Google when it says down here, um, we'll get to this uh, whole thing later, but let's jump down where it says, during the new moon phase, the lunar face is completely dark and the moon rises and sets with the sun. I mean, that's what they taught us all through in, during school. Um, I, I can't understand how there are people who even believe in it. I mean, much less somebody who's trying to actually teach that, but anyway, let's go on. The point here is that we're supposed to blow the trumpet. See, this can fall in spiritual warfare because that's the reason why we blow these trumpets. Um, I find this information in the Zohar. I haven't read the Zohar. I did do a search for a trumpet one time trying to find some information and that book popped up where I, I couldn't find it just now. Or I would show it to you. Um, but anyway, what we learned there is that blowing the trumpets is what keeps the spirits away. So, so we learned that um, when it talks about Rosh Hashanah and uh, um, when it talks about the memorial of blowing the trumpets, it talks about why we blow the trumpet at the new moon. And that's probably why I couldn't find it. I didn't search for um the memorial blowing the trumpets or Rosh Hashanah, and they trick it up a little bit. You can search for that, and then it'll talk about why we blow up the trumpet in the new moon. But we just do so for obedience, first of all. That's all we really know. It's because we're commanded to, we're told to do so. This is a precept. We blow the trumpet on the new moon. But we'll learn in the Zohar, if anybody ever reads it, that um, it's to keep the spirits, the evil spirits, away. It, that's what it does. Blowing the trumpet in the new moon keeps the evil spirits away. So. You know, a lot of people don't want to hear that kind of stuff. So let's just go on. Um, the time appointed, that's the full moon. Or time appointed, that's when all of the major feast days are. That's uh, Tabernacles, that's Pentecost, that's uh, the Feast of Weeks, and that's the Feast of Unleavened Bread or Passover all fall at the time appointed. Um, that's when the big bright uh, moon in the sky is uh, as bright as it can be. And at the solemn feast day and at our solemn feast day now the solemn feast day would be like atonement day where we are commanded to blow the trumpet uh during the sabbatical year or the um um jubilee year i have to look that up because we're in a sabbatical year now so many of us will blow the trumpet anyway i, I blow my trumpet every year on the um atonement day but let's go on 
For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. So look here, it still is. Did it ever go away? It was a statute. How are you going to say? How, how mm, I ain't gonna, what it is the scripture? It says it was a statute for Israel. Mm, that's it for Israel and a law for the God of Jacob. Maybe the point here is that it's not a statute for all of the world. Not everybody blows the trumpet on the new moon. They, but a lot of us do. All right, so let's come over here to Google and let's see when this time is. We're looking for a new moon for August. It says the exact moment of August new moon occurs at 5.39 a.m. on Wednesday, according to In the Sky. So the 0% moon was at 5.39 on yesterday. And we see over here at RenewedMoon.com that um, there obviously was no sighting of the moon. Um, we're still expect they're still expecting it on August the 17th or this evening is uh, when they're expecting a new moon. Now notice here that it says the sixth renewed moon. I like the way they said that that's uh, true because some of the other sites may say that it's the sixth month according to their man-made calendar, of course they are. But we're gonna learn in this video that we're actually in the fifth month. Oddly enough, uh, in 2023, the sixth month and the fifth month are overlapping. So, but what this is saying is, is that they're for sure, 100% sure that there will be a sighting of the new moon on August the 17th. So whether you see it or not, think about it or not, um, we want to remember to blow the trumpets this evening at sunset at your area you want to blow something you know if it's even just a car horn or shout we have to uh, make a joy what is, what is song let's go over back there and look it says sing aloud unto our father our strength and make a joyful noise you know and then it goes on to start naming these you know various instruments so basically it's just the noise that we're going to make there on the 17th but Anyway, so let's get into this whole six month, fifth month deal here. I'm going to have to practice saying that. Um, first thing we'll do is we'll come to the scripture. This is uh, the first book ever written on our planet here. You know, whether you believe it's flat or not, you know, <laughs> this is the first writing that was written um, down here in for or and by humans. Um, this was written by Enoch, who we heard about in the book of Genesis, how he walked with the angels and he was taught by those same angels. Well, this is what he was taught. Praise our Father in heaven. He wrote it down and we have it here now where we can read how his calendar works, particularly where it's talking about the 364th day. Now, we've heard about this 364th day. Um, we're Finally, praise our Father in heaven, starting to get an understanding of this in the last, you know, seven or eight years, how all of this works. And we're not going to go all through all of this. I'll scroll through it if you want to pause it and read it, or you can look for some links below. What we want to do is hear about this 364 days. So we'll come up here to the beginning of the chapter. Which is, which is the beginning of the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. This is where we hear about the laws of the luminaries, the laws of the celestials, basically how they work. And like Genesis 1 and 14 says, um, this confirms that they're used as our father's timepiece. The only difference about Enoch is he's the wise guy who actually explains it all to us here in this book. But anyway, he's talking about months and we see down here in verse 9 that he goes on to start explaining how these months work but notice let me go ahead and read it. it says in the same manner it goes forth in the first month by the great gate so it's talking about months here but then it starts talking about gates but notice this is the fourth time we see the word month here in Enoch let's go to the fifth time it's all the way in the next chapter where it says every month at its exit and entrance, it becomes changed and its periods are as the periods of the sun. So when we go back to the chapter that we're talking about, it's not talking about months. It's talking about gates. And so he's going to explain how this celestial calendar works, how the sacred calendar works. I wanted to say how our father's calendar works, how that Genesis 1 and 14 calendar works. 
by way of gates, not months. That's important to understand. Not months, but gates. Because when we look for the word gate, watch this. You're looking here at chapter 72 and you see how many times the word gate is used. Because that's how the sacred calendar works. It doesn't work on months, it works on gates. Like this. Here is a representation that we created on this channel for sundials. If you want to learn how to make a sundial out of an old satellite dish, praise our Father in Heaven, you can check one of our other videos. Matter of fact, remind me and I'll put a link right here. But what this is showing us is how these gates would look if we had a gnomon that was casting the sun's shadow correctly. What you would have, what Enoch was saying, is that the last day of the year is when the days and the nights are equal. See right there in verse 33, it says the year is precisely 364 days. Now, of course, this is the sacred year. This takes into consideration the solar year and the lunar year and the celestial year. The stars all play into this. And when you put all of those three calendars, all of those three celestials together, you end up with 364 days precisely, precisely, exactly. But you have to put all three together. You can't just say the sun has 365.25 because, yeah, it does. Absolutely. And we learned that in Enoch 2. We learned that in the second book of Enoch. Uh, okay, y'all. Um, sorry about this, but I'm going to go ahead and end this video now. As you can see, we have a lot more to um, this recording. I uh, didn't even make it halfway through. It goes around. The complete video will probably be more like 45 minutes, but for the sake of time, we got to get this out. The new moon, those in the east are actually um, expecting to see it. So we need to go ahead and get this uh, part up now. But yeah, be ready for the second part. We're going to continue on getting into some um, really good stuff here. In the meantime, I'll continue to work on it and get it posted. Thanks for your patience. Shalom.